Welcome back to Inside Story. It's a business that's high pressure, high profile, and can even be high brow. And making it calls for talent, lots of it. We now take a peek into the world of classical music in Hong Kong by catching up with those who are in the know. And as you're about to find out, job satisfaction can mean more than just making music. They face many things, you know. Um, s music students from any institution in the world can go out and do a variety of things. Now, many of the young people here will um, anticipate being a, perhaps a concert pianist, a concert violinist, in, an international star. Now, this uh, realistically happens to very few. Yes, I think any um, orchestral member in London is under a certain amount of stress. 69, please, everybody. When I was there, uh, we worked um, probably three sessions a day, from 10 till 1, 2 till 5, and then 7 till 10 in the evening. For probably five days in a week, and we didn't have any days off, um, there wasn't a lot of security there, so the more money, uh, the more, I got more money for the more work I did. Just everything was uh, at a very um, high pressure all the time. Some of these people here, uh, the very high standards, will go into orchestras, either here or abroad. Um, other people will uh, be playing in other ensembles. Some will be teaching. Um, there'll be others going into perhaps music technology or a, a lot of different things they can do. I did the Hong Kong. I was impressed with it. And there at my doorsteps, actually in Carnegie Hall in New York City, uh, they had auditions. So I figured eh, it cost a subway token and, uh, you know, get over there. And I played an audition. The next thing I knew, I was here. I never thought of Asia, when I was growing up, people thought of Europe much more as a uh, uh, cultural uh, center. And of course, 15, 20 years ago, Asia was, in, was just sort of starting its economic upturn. Because of the situation being in Asia, um, I'm able to do quite a lot of solo work, a lot of chamber music, a lot of uh, concerto work, a lot of recital work, which is not always so easy to, uh, to accomplish elsewhere as an orchestral musician. My trip to North Korea, um, I don't know if it's a stepping stone in terms of my career, but in terms of life experience, it's one of the great things I've done. Uh, I was the first American-born uh, classical musician soloist ever to perform, perform there, and that was during Kim Il-sung's 80th uh, birthday. It was absolute luck. This friend of mine simply ended up on a train to Beijing with the cultural minister of North Korea and said, how would you like to have an American perform? He said, great idea. He says, well, I have a neighbor. I think he plays a musical instrument. The next thing I knew, I was in the State Department in Washington, D.C., showing my videos and telling about my trip. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello, how are you today? Good. No, I feel that it's very important, especially now in Asia, to contribute as a teacher towards the uh, towards the future musicians. Let's let's just cool down a little bit. The discipline tempo, that many Asian countries and, uh, are noted for certainly carries over to music, which is in fact a discipline. So a certain respect for teachers, a certain respect for learning a discipline that has existed since martial arts days in Asia certainly carries over to music. It's the initial attack that I'm worried about. We always get right into it, but I want to make sure that we sink right into where it belongs immediately. People who really have something to offer are often people who challenge the system. Well, they master the system first, and then they change it. They actually go to the next border. And the people that do that often have a deviant we mind, start it okay, you, which and then certainly has closer, been changing in Asia, but that forward. you'll find in American Europe often you'll have oh, those kind of people who will actually challenge the system. Will are they're more, more will will occur more often in those places. So that's one, one weak point. The other weak point is also that tradition, the level of training that you're getting as a younger kid, throughout Asia not just in that handful of, of capitals, okay. might not be quite as strong as you would receive in many different places in Europe, say. You could say that when uh, we have to compare the audience of uh, classical music channel with uh, the Canton Pop uh, channel, uh, of course uh, there are more people who like to uh, listen to uh, Canton Pop, but uh, we, as the only classical music channel in Hong Kong. As a government broadcaster, we have the responsibility and we have our own goals, our own mission to bring classical music to uh, listeners. We know that there are many more young students uh, who want to listen to classical music and so we have developed a few programs in our channel so that uh, we develop our audience. Uh, we have more young, young audience now. I forgot my music. Hello. <laughs> it's my all time practice. Hi. Go but then, to today, then, no music. He no music. forgot wearing his uh, music. I mean, he cannot play. So he had to go pick up or somehow or send to him. That's musician's life. They only practice. No. They forgot how to <laughs> eat, how to sleep. Like <laughs> I was practicing this morning, left my music on the stand, came here to rehearse with my colleagues, and uh, at this moment, a friend of mine is in my home getting my music and bringing it over in the last second. We might not be able to rehearse before the concert. And um, yet we have to come off incredibly relaxed and confident in front of the audience who's paid a lot of money to uh, hear a very well-prepared and rehearsed group. Very close, very close. Hey, I, I haven't really played, haven't really warmed up on anything. So this is a classic case of, in America, what we say, if you can't dazzle them, no, what do they say? If you can't impress them with your brilliance, dazzle them with your bullshit. Can you say that on TV? Um, before or after, they're going to beat me up. <laughs>
that's on the international circuit here and um, all the orchestras that, that tour this area come through Hong Kong. Um, last year in the Academy um, there were several important orchestras that came through and some very important musicians. So it's, uh, yes, it's a very high profile place indeed. I think the most important thing is that we um, focus as musicians on a dedication to the music itself and, and, and also ourselves in terms of pushing ourselves and making contribution to our instrument or to the idiom that we're involved in. And hopefully life will take us to wherever we can do that best and nurture that.